everybody, Josh RV Nerd out here in Idaho Falls today. Really pumped, got my hands on the new smallest, lightest Cougar fifth wheel I think they've ever made. This is the new 2100 in their Sport Series. The Sport Series is a newer uh, release. It's a small collection of floor plans. And the way I kind of look at it is it's sort of like a, like a Ford Bronco. It's a little bit more untamed. It's a little more rough and rugged. It's, it's just... Uh, straightforward, all thriller, no filler, everything that matters, nothing that doesn't. So you're not paying for stupid fluff stuff, and you're not towing and hauling stupid fluff stuff. So the weights on these stay far, far more manageable. This is an awesome compact solo or couples camper, where it actually provides shockingly good, I think, storage given the size of the RV. It still has their Solar Flex package going on the roof. You've got some pretty decent uh, power awning space on this one. Uh, we still have their good weather package. It just doesn't do like fancy dancy tech packages like there's a lot of people like I don't care about Bluetoothing and awning for my phone if that's you take a look at this because again this is everything that matters and nothing that doesn't it's a bit of an update and revision off the previous 23 MLS if you remember that one which despite being called a middle living it was actually a rear kitchen but I suppose it also had a middle living so whatever never mind um, but what they did here is instead of a closet slide in the upper deck what they just built in a big extra closet into the RV itself. So less seams, less weight, uh, frankly, more storage, because now it can go from floor to ceiling instead of only inside the slide out. Um, it, but again, it doesn't do all the flashy, fancy things. And the road mode on this one, it can be kind of rough, although it's not bad for stopping to make a sandwich. And if you like how we share the good with the bad, make sure you hit that subscribe button. And I'm really excited to hear what do you think about this new sport series as we go. I tell you, these little smart TV promo demo ads, they are uh, they're, they're the only entertainment you ever need. Well, I, I don't know. I, I think maybe some people that go camping might uh, respectfully disagree with that. So, like I said, at a glance, this is very, very much based on its predecessor, the 23MLS in the uh, what is called Cougar Half Ton Series, even though I do recommend still towing that with a three-quarter ton truck. Um, it's a middle living rear kitchen, and it's just a full wall rear kitchen, but it puts the refrigerator in the slide in the same way that it puts the lotion on its skin, or else it gets the hose again. But um, never mind. Um, Buffalo Bob? Is that? Was that the person's name? Never mind. Anyway, um, it's, a, it's, it's 10 pounds of sugar in a 5-pound sack, and it has a lot going on. But like I said, it is... Um, not, not going to be the be all end all for everybody. Actually, where this one really shines is they, they made some hard decisions in certain areas to really prioritize function over fashion. And sometimes it is a little bit simpler and sometimes it does leave you the opportunity to do some personalization, some upgrades. So first of all, there are a set of power outlets down there under that dinette, which is cool. Um, it does have storage under the dinette benches. I wish they would do some kind of door or drawer or something to open that up, but they don't, so neither here nor there. In the Sport Series, we are going with a pedestal-based dinette. Um, if you watch a lot of my videos, I tell you, the first thing I would do is I would unscrew those pedestal mounts and I would swap on a, uh, a folding, floating table leg base onto the existing tabletop. And uh, that would work for me. Now, I'm sitting over here in the uh, the sofa right now, kind of giving you the view from the driver's seat. And for no bigger than it is, it actually has decent campsite window coverage. There's not a ton of windows on the campsite, but there's also not a ton of campsite to have windows. They did maintain the full shade in the door because, again, they are function over fashion. And it is cool and I, that they, uh, Cougar's actually, well, your input to Cougar is the reason the entire industry has these shades flipped right now. So kudos to you folks. But I, I would leave it like this because when I'm sitting down, I have privacy. But if somebody knocks on my door like Three's Company, I can peek my head over and see who it is uh, before some gas station murder hobo jumps me. Now, as I mentioned, this doesn't have fancy dancy tech packages. This has these physical response devices called switches and that works for me that you know what the bluetooth and all the stuff to your phone is neat but you know what i found in my house i can grab my phone and i can smart home smart tv smart lighting smart kitchen all this stupid stuff and i don't tend to do it a lot i i, I tend to just still stand up and flick the light switch now maybe that's because i'm um you know, I'm, I'm like the oldest generation of millennial, so 
I might still be kind of um, a little more traditional in some of those things. Pardon the uh, up close in your face rotation right here. But maybe I'm just still, I, I'm, I'm an old man enough <laughs> that I, I'm okay doing that. Now you've got a choice between a theater seat or a trifold hide a bed. Um, my personal pick would be theater seat. I'd be kind of curious to know, would you prefer the hide a bed or would you prefer the theater seat? Uh, this is that marine woven kind of flooring stuff right here. Not a traditional like fabric, you know, sponge carpet that's going to soak up the red Kool-Aid that I have got a bad. I can drink anything. I can drink anything. But the moment I start drinking something that's going to stain, I'm like a child and I'm going to spill it everywhere. Um, up top here, by the way, you've got their uh, uh, 15,000 BTU air system with these little cyclone style air vents. And basically, you know, like when uh, you, you, uh, you were a kid and you pulled the plug on the bathtub and you watched a little whirlpool action. It's going to do that with the air, but it's going to suck the air out of the vents and get it down here where you actually want it. Now, it does appear that we have a Mastodon migration coat hanger space going over here. Um this one makes sense to me. Why is this? This guy went way off trail. I would personally bring that guy over here, put him up here. I, I don't know. It's not necessarily my favorite location for something. I'm a little curious. Uh, hang tight for road mode. I'm going to close the slide out. I'm wondering if you can still get to that, that converter fuse panel down there. That would be a really handy feature. Now, this does have floor vented heating, by the way. But we're finally starting to see their new style of heat vents on there. They're far more walkable. Um, they tend to keep more junk out. And weirdly, Keystone found they accidentally got better airflow. So, <laughs> cool. Bank error in your favor. Now, I mentioned the storage below the bench. I do really like how they open that one up over here next to the door for a little clutter cutter shoe garage. That, to me, is a really, really smart move. Uh, that's, that's making money moves right there. <laughs> I like when air is worth something. Uh, taking a look, uh, TV can pivot around, looking at all the storage here. You don't see a traditional pantry in the kitchen area, but you've got like a floor to ceiling pantry over beside the entertainment center. It does mean you kind of take two steps across the RV, but it, you know, it just kind of is what it is. Dinette obviously can fold into a sleeper and that rear kitchen, um, Mr. Hammer, uh, the MC advised it was too legit to quit. Uh, and it just keeps going and going and going like the Energizer Bunny. Now you've got your choice of either the, the 10 plus cubic foot uh, 12 volt DC compressor fridge or the gas electric two way. Um, I, you know, I, whether you want, you know, which one you want probably depends on how much boondocking you do or don't do. And I just noticed something. They're been, they've been really smart with the features on this and there's little areas I think you could critique and say, oh, it doesn't have the things that the other Cougars have, which it doesn't. And that also means it doesn't have the price tag the other Cougars have. But a lot of times when a manufacturer tries to make a more price aggressive offering, they stop giving you things like USB plugs next to your seating that you can use every day. Not only are they giving us some USBs, they're also doing a type C, which is really good for fast charging. Um, that is a, uh, if you're not familiar with that, basically, you know, a lot of newer phones have a hard time charging based off, um, you know, lighter duty um, plugs. And they don't always, you know, work the way they're supposed to. Well, USB type C's, they just pull more juice, basically. And uh, they're going to get that job done for you. Now, notice how this is kind of built out into the bathroom here. You're going to see why once we get to the bedroom. One of the things I was very pleasantly surprised to see, great headroom in that shower. I'm just over six foot tall, probably about six two with the shoes that I'm wearing today, by the way. So if you are a uh, no shoes, flat foot, six three, you should fit in there. Um, or if you're smaller, obviously. The uh, space around the porcelain foot flush stool is pretty darn nice. I did notice there is a floor heat vent right next to that thing, though. I know that some people do not like that. So you might want to kind of plan on some kind of little bath mat sliding pocket privacy door in here and you do have a uh you know if it's a really harsh taco tuesday or you've been eating toothpicks and you got some sharp poops <laughs> sorry i can't believe i said that oh uh, actually i can anyway you've got a grab bar but i guess allegedly you can hang some towels off that oh god i'm trying to hold it together that i <clears throat> that's stupid it's funny and it really tickled me in a special way. Um, <clears throat> back to the task at hand. I need to get focused here. Storage below the sink. If you got one of those small little waste baskets that could use like a Walmart or a Target bag uh, as a garbage bag liner, it would fit perfectly in there. And another thing I noticed, 
they don't do any sort of like peekaboo doorways. They fully frame out all their doors, which is, uh, I think a lot of people really like that for privacy sake. And again, when a manufacturer starts getting a little more budget sensitive, they will start dropping out features like a single light switch for the bedroom ceiling. Now you've got little side stand lights, you've got overhead reading lights, you know, so you can still have some personal light action going on over there. Household and USB outlets on both sides of that headboard. Once again, with the USB A's and the United States B type C varieties. That is all uh, pretty cool and well done. Um, rough, bad news. Like, let's, let's get this out of the way. This is currently a Camp Queen. I have it on good authority. Cougars working on getting their floor plans converted to True Queens. So they are listening. They appreciate the feedback. There is room for a True Queen in here, I feel. That's my two cents. And it does have a little bit of an ankle breaker step, but it's not super pronounced. It's not massive. It's not like the nine inch drop that a lot of brands have because they push their extra upper deck support up a little bit. You see where there's that little carpet jump right there? That is actually covering the extra upper deck support uh, that, that you know uh, all ties into the, uh, the, the pin box area. Now, I was gonna try to do a cool little before and after look inside the storage, and I realized that I left this open. So I'm gonna close it just so we can see it open again right now. <laughs> I'm kind of dumb like that. I like that they still included the struts under that bed too. Again, they're doing the things that really matter, but instead of a closet slide, which adds weight, which adds cost, they just built a big closet into the wall over there. And I like that design. I'm personally, I'm a big, big fan um, of that design. Now, if I, uh, I'm sitting dead on the bed right now and I notice that uh, I, I'm not hitting my head, but uh, just so that you can see it, if I uh, ET phone home neck stretch, I still don't hit that. So if you hear some crazy bump in the night, um, you're, you're not gonna stand up real fast and, and, and knock yourself out. Now, actually, let me sit back down. I'm gonna do it slowly not to make you motion sick. I saw this out of the corner of the viewfinder. Um, this is 50 amps still. It's single air standard. You can add a second air up here, whether it's factory installed or whether you ask us to do it. That is something that can be done on this one. And I'd be kind of curious to know what you think about it. I got a feeling though, and, and, and I hope you appreciate that I go out of my way to show stuff like this, even if it isn't always awesome. A lot of people like what they see so far, but when it comes to road mode, we flat lose the upper deck. There, there's no way around it. There's no churching it up. We flat lose the upper deck. We had a surprise guest for just a moment there. They saw me recording. You should have saw the video. It's like, oh no. It's like, it's okay. I'm not doing brain surgery over here. It's not like if I slip with a scalpel, someone's life gets ruined. Anyway, good job, Cougar. Like, we might have lost the upper deck, but good job making it so that when the slide's closed, we can still access the fuse panel. I see a lot of manufacturers botch that one. Um, now, up top here, I guess in road mode, you could still get to the TV, but I don't recommend you actually sit in and occupy the slide out in towable RVs while they're retracted because nobody tests for it. So nobody can promise you um, it's okay and it won't break. And if it does, it's going to be on your dime. What is nice, though, is this is super snacktastic for travel stopping. Because the dinette is not in a slide. The sink is not in a slide. The fridge is not in a slide. The microwave and the um, oven, they are blocked by the slide side. But I think for like a quick travel stop or sandwich or something, you're going to you're gonna be okay here. So it doesn't have all of the travel function. It has some travel function. If you do want to stop and stay over somewhere, you're going to have to kind of plan where you stop and uh, what kind of space you have so you can open the slide. So keep that in mind. Now, we are really squeezed in here at this show display, but thankfully this not being the biggest rig, I think we can still get a pretty decent look at, especially since I've got, like myself, half pretzel twisted up here over into these grandstands. Now, taking a look at the weights and the measures, as I said, this is the smallest, lightest, I, I think, Cougar fifth wheel that Keystone has ever made. Um, so when it starts coming into towing, uh, you know, a lot of people want to start asking, okay, what kind of, um, you know, can, can, I, can I tow it with a half ton? And my answer to that is... Maybe. And, and the reason that I say that is there are a lot of half tons that are just not going to be equipped to handle this because they're going to lack the appropriate payload rating to handle the hitch weight, especially once you're in the truck and you load the RV with cargo. 
um, it is not necessarily impossible to get a really beefy half ton um, that I kind of call like a three-quarter ton pickup, even though that's not a, a real descriptor. Um, it is possible to get one that can work here. It's just uh, not the one that you're probably going to find at the dealership every day. So a good three-quarter and up is always really still my recommendation for fifth wheels. Now, you saw that they still put that nice shock dampening pin box on there. With this being a smaller rig, people want to tow and go. You know, they're trying to make that experience comfortable. They put the spare tire in the front compartment, and I'd be kind of curious. Uh, so, you know, do you is that a good like? I like that it keeps it out of the weather. And if God forbid you do need the spare, it's much much easier to get to than a belly mounted spare tire. But at the same time, it is eating into cargo space. Thankfully, we still have that enclosed docking center, and I personally feel a pretty respectable front cargo, uh, you know, bay given the small size of this RV. Now we do still have those solar flex options, Keystone standardized solar package. We're looking at the base 200 watt today that has that 15 amp MPPT uh, Victron charge controller. And I really, really like how they made sure that battery disconnect stayed up out of the way. Now I'm going to crawl through here if you pardon me. Now sliding out the other side of that pass through right there. Couple nice things. This does still have all the same inverter prep that the uh, the the bigger Cougars, uh, the more refined Cougars, uh, will. When you see those yellow stickers, by the way, that's what that is. So if you go back and uh, rewatch some things in the RV, you'll see those yellow stickers in a couple key places. That's what that is right there. Now. I kind of, uh, it's so funny how things go cyclic uh, s s sorry, I'm tripping over a chair behind me that I didn't know was there because I'm moonwalking, but things are cyclical. And I'm personally, I'm kind of back to the phase where just a flat, plain, white exterior, it's just, even though it's kind of vanilla, it's also kind of clean and it's still sort of working for me here. Now, as I mentioned, they've got all the same sort of weather package features going on here in the sport series that they have in their their bigger more upscale brothers being fair though one of the things that does change they do um swap away from goodyears on these so that is going to be an import tire right there keep that one in mind tankless on demand water heater means uh even though they're like even though there's probably only two of you here uh, let's assume you don't have a guest um i take uh i think fairly short showers um, my wife takes longer showers than I do, and I let her shower first while we have plenty of hot water. We don't have a tankless water heater, so typically I end up taking, at best, a lukewarm shower. So there's that. Ooh, ooh, I kind of like the look of this. They went with that glass front door that has the full window in it. Reminds me, uh, very similar to, say, like what you might have seen in um, the, the Cherokee family of RVs, like an Arctic Wolf fifth wheel does that same door. It, uh, it does add just a little, you know, breakup of the color on the sidewall it's kind of working for me it also adds a little bit of that shine factor and hey shiny looks cool now uh down here on the back a couple things this one does not have full on standard auto leveling on a shorter fifth wheel like this i don't know that that's too massive of a deal that might be a deal if that's a deal breaker if it's not i don't know leave me a comment let me know i could see it going either way i do appreciate that they still give us a place to keep the stinky slinky though you see a little sewer hose tube and on the back here they still have the same i'm gonna call it like tow package that uh the uh the some of the bigger cougars have i think it's actually more appropriate here on this smaller one that it has that receiver hitch and the four-way wiring harness right there now one other thing you might notice it doesn't have the same rear ladder that most of the Cougars have. They did go with a uh, telescopic ladder prep mount. Uh, so if you're not familiar with those, there's these little you know ladders that can you know stretch out and then collapse down. You could keep it stored up in that front pass through when you're not using it. That's what this one's going to be prepped for right here. Um, and giving you a quick look up at the rooftop there. Um, one thing I did notice is where there is a, uh, a seam in the wood on the roof. The, uh, the, the seam was very pronounced up there. Now, I don't think that's necessarily indicative of the Cougar Sport Series. I think that's just how this one happened to get put together. And I don't love that seam that I just saw right there. But just because it ain't pretty doesn't mean I'm going to, you know, uh, like ignore it and walk around it. If I see something, I say something. I want you to know that you're going to get fair information off this channel. So thank you once again for tuning in. Let me know what you think about the new sport series here. You know, where did they nail it? Where did they fail? And one thing I always like to ask people, tell me one thing you like and what is one thing that you would change on this RV given the opportunity? And we can get that feedback back to the factory and we'll see what they come up with. 
Um, in the meantime, check the link in the video description. You can see where uh, any of our Cougar stores, where we have one of these parked and what we're asking. And until next time, take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone. Thank you.